rank and files of defense force or national defense force DOD directors management patient that mean present personnel rank and files family of moloto mashangu and related families i stand here greeting you all as a khotsayat peace be upon you khotso dumelang khotso amen eh program director you are still of three minutes one work with me so i brought the bodyguard <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen congregants everybody present good morning mm. uh, i'm ahead today sister is gone as fictionally known at finance medical payments we used to call her sister uh, you'll be asking yourself who's this bodyguard next to me he's mr bela he's the previous manager of pushia he's the person when pushia arrived mentored her taught her all the strings what's happening in finance medical payment so i thought it would be proper if he would be next to us or if he would be next to me not as a bodyguard like us, i was just joking just as a manager or a previous manager <clears throat> uh, i didn't think i'll have this strength to stand before you and address you but in soul my director asked me to represent a chance for me to say goodbye to my sister and i hope god, god give me strength to can go through that uh push ya daisy moloto uh first arrived in little ten finance medical department in 2019 uh, we have a previous director who was mr gigwa mr gigwa was on a mission to get to get us personnel to can work at liw uh, on his mission mr gigwa uh, went to dca director central accounts and she found a diamond a diamond being poshia moloto uh, like a name poshia figile she arrived at medical payments in october 2019 she was uh, i don't know to say a replacement or lateral transfer because we had another supervisor Ms. Mulot, I mean, Ms. Van Balion, who have just retired in May, and Pushia came on board after being brought by Mr. Gidwa. Uh, this was time I was privileged to meet and work with such a beautiful soul who was intelligent, loving, ever smiling, committed, focused at well work. Uh, the previous speaker spoke about Chobolo uh, and we had a memorial service on Thursday where Chobolo missed out. Everybody described Poshia how she is but they forgot the word Chobolo. It's true she was a Chobolo and I can see yeah, it is vibrant. I can see yeah, there's order in the church and I'm dead sure that's influence of Poshia because that's how Poshia was, even at work. He'll reprimand our people, even myself being a supervisor, equally she'll also reprimand me at times. 
So she was a firm woman, and she was always punctual. She was, I think, the first person before late to arrive at work. Previously, there were two. There was another lady who came 6 o'clock, and Pusha will arrive 10 past 6. I'll come around after 6. Uh, after 10 past 6. Uh, Figila was family orientated. She loved her family, especially her children. Bumi, she could not talk, <laughs> stop talking about them. Every day, you're here, Bumi, you're here, Junior. Uh, every day, believe me, every day, she'll tell her, talk about the children. Uh, I remember at one stage, Junior, I don't know what the guy did at school, school boy. Oh, guys, how we are, or, or young boys. Uh, so somebody just, I don't know what they did to Junior, and then she'll tell me. The um, fun thing is, tomorrow I'm going to, 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 to school. Say, Sister, what happened now? There's somebody providing you a Junior. I think that guy took a Junior's uh, calculator. And then he went to school and said, I said, oh, no, how did you address that thing? He said, no. I told that boy that uh, if, if you don't bring that calculator, I don't know what I'll do with you tomorrow. <laughs> so fortunately, the boy brought the calculator tomorrow. Uh, but the children and the family at large, I want to give you a, a verse for Jesiah 8, verse 16. It reads as follows. In Bedi. Bona na le bana ba ba o morana ampile go bona re di hlatsi sechabeng sa Israel tsa morena ra matlaolo yo a dula go thabeng ya sio le ka ikara ka sekhoa le ka ikara ka zulu Jesaya 8 verse 16 eh ke bona direct ha me maroro tlo tla mona Mr. Pila come let me do sa eh to Matalo family, uh, a new journey starting. Uh, There's space you must attend to because there will be a vacuum. So, Pushia loved the children very much, and I know he also loved you very much. So, Rokopela or le <laughs> Mama la pin ratsi ba la khatana di khontsi go be a le malapa mamba kana ba dula ba bontsha di smile ba tshepilo swana le nna lwena e fela di khontsi re gana re khatalana mara mo mano e ke ona e tsuma gore bona lo mkhalabe o etela pa le la moloto le ba ga mahlangu le tane le tshwarane le benga tete le tshole pele re khopela mo di ma go fema ata mkhalaba ga ishu wa re tsewa go ka re she also loved animals. I remember at some stage, her dog passed away. Her dog was Snoopy, and the dog passed away. So she came at work, told Mr. Pela that the, the dog dog passed away. I said, no, take a, a family responsibility, leave. She said, no, she loved her work. She insisted on coming to work. So the following day, myself and Mr. Pela will tease her and say, Tapelo ene nyamja. Tapelo ene nyamja. So, and then she said, no, I've already buried. There's a no, it should have ever proper funeral. So next time we'll also tease her because it have touched her so much. Next time we'll tease her, hey, the patala zanen di, 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 kovaza zanja gare. She used to tell us she's going to pep to buy blankets for the dog. Uh, she loved animals, so I was surprised at one stage there was there were a lot of cats in the base. So 
Sometimes those cats, when they scattered around, she'll, stand, she'll just sit in the car and wait for me to arrive so that I can work with her there. So unfortunately, those cats, we don't know what happened to them. But they definitely, they were, I think I'm not me say definitely, because if I did say that, I would be sure about that. But I suppose or think the cats were present because a lot of cats passed away there. Then there was left one cat, his name was Ginger. They called her Ginger. The lady was coming ill. It was a white woman together push her. The, the, the name of the cat was Ginger because I think of the color. So Pushia was afraid of the cat. So but on that day, Pushia was touched and crying. So I, I asked myself, or Pushia was afraid of those cats. But since all well, those cats have passed on, and then she was so touched. So she really loved animals. Uh, I won't go that far because I see Amanda Thread. And the keyboard man is staring at me serious. So I'm really under threat. But uh, let me convey this. Uh, our protection services the guards at our office, they say ngai ngai to you, Mulot and Mashango family. HR division within the same flat first floor studies, HR studies and social workers, they say ngai ngai. Patient that mean they are here to support us. I convey for them as well as they say ngai ngai. Uh, I knew that I crowned the the but they but they say ngai ngai people. So farewell, our sister. Uh, I I couldn't go through everything, but God bless. Thank you all. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Uh, I would uh, like to introduce myself. My name is Mavis Simono. I'm co-emceeing with Pastor Tahe. Amen. Right now, we'll ask our choir just to give us a, a worship song, even if it's two minutes, so that we will again, and then we continue with our program. Amen. Kita opa kadi ya ata kita ri hallelujah oh hallelujah oh sinata se 
I'm sure says Kona. She has already joined angels. Ula, Ula, knowing that spirit sagas is Poshia. Oh Jesus. See right now. I would like to call Pastor Mashiane to come and uh, give us a word, a, a speech as he was the leader f- uh, for admin ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And also I'd like to acknowledge the leadership of the church. More specifically, our visionary, Pastor Siwe and Pastor Ningi in absentia. They love to be here, but unfortunately they were here, they were in the family during the week. But today they didn't make it, but they've got, we've got some pastors in our midst anointed pastors of God in our midst. So I won't call them by names, all of them, because there are so many. And all of them, they are in this house. Even if they are in different branches or campuses. The leadership of the church, the elders of the church, the church at large, the bereaved family, the Matangus and the Molotos, family and friends, colleagues, and neighbors, I greet you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, my name is Abraham Mashi, and if they already indicated, one of the pastors in the church, and being responsible for admin in this church. And I was working together with these ladies that are here as admin department together with Osposhi. And whatever they've said more about Osposhi, especially the issue of trouble one, I didn't know about it up until uh, O.C. Agnes and O.C. Lorraine told me about it. So it's then that I, but when she was with me, she was so good. I didn't realize that she's just such kind of a person. So, but the way they, they were so afraid of her, so one day I asked uh, Lorraine, can't you why every time when you see us push here, maybe you work? And they want to make things be like this. It's then that they told me how, what kind of a person she is. then that I realized that. Amen. So now we are here on behalf of the church. The, send, the church sent us here to come and talk more about us push here. We are Shamaipen Church. This is the church that we are. And this church is a home beyond the place of worship. It's safe, it's a woman, it's welcoming. So the reason why Ospushi has spent most of her time here is because of that. It's safe, it's warm, and it's welcoming. So those who, like the sister who said she wanted to come, she missed out because Ospushi, one of her responsibilities in this church is to make it a point that are people who are here at church for the very first time, she's the one. Actually, our department is the one which is welcoming first time comers in the church. So you have missed out because she won't be here because most of the people, they loved her of her smile. Even if you can see the photo that we saw that side, normally when is how she was when she was uh, welcoming the first time comers in the church. Amen. And we are so proud of her because our church is one of the most grow, fastest growing church in Pretoria. Our church started in 2018 on the 2nd of September. Another five years in existence. This year will be six years in September. But already we've got four branches around Pretoria. We've got a branch in Hamanskar, we've got a branch in Pretoria East, we've got a branch in Acadia, even this one. In five years' time, we managed to have four branches. So God is good. You can see the work of God is continuing this place. And normally we tell people that before you can leave this place, we'll experience the touch of God's presence. There's no way you can come to this house and not experience the touch of God. Amen. And one of the founding scriptures of this church is for where two or more people have gathered together, uh, in, in God's name, the Lord will be here with them. Every time when we get in this place, even today, we won't be surprised if ever the God touches you. Sometimes people, they say they are coming for a funeral, but you end up being touched, like the friend said. Amen. Amen. So, Ospushia was uh, one of the people who are very strict in this ministry. I still remember before our Passover conference, I went to a hospital with my wife to go and see her. 
and I was saying to her, she said, hey, it will be for the very first time I miss uh, Passover because I'm here in hospital. And I will miss you a lot. And we've got so many people who are joining the church for this year. We've, we had 63 people who are joining the church in, in Good Friday, Passover conference. So I said, I've got so many people and so many certificates. And normally what Ospushia is doing in the church has responsibility in, in admin office is he have to capture all those people on our database, church database. So I said, no, I will give someone in the group to make it a point that she update the database. He said, no, 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 Mashia. I'll be back. So those people, when I give them something, they... So uh, uh, database, they the way I want it to be. So just leave, let, let them just leave that uh, database. I will see it when I come back. So even now, I still have those 63 people who, who had mem went for membership. I was still waiting for her up until this time, unfortunately, meaning we have to choose from these ones. I don't know who will be able to, <laughs> to carry that, who will be able to fit in that shoes of Ospoche. Because normally, I used to take the certificate and say I did. Even some of, the, of them here, they wanted to update, but hey, it was not good. So but Diana, because she's focused, she's a perfectionist. She wants things to be done the way she wanted it to be. So that is why we end up giving. Even the sister who was, like, for instance, before Passover, there were some certificates that we wanted. They are with her. We couldn't find them because they were in, in her car. And the car was with, uh, I think it's the sister who spoke here in town. We couldn't find those certificates. So I said, no, let me go and get the, those certificates. She said, but my, my, that machine, you can just go and find them, but... I'm afraid because I'm not around. I'm not sure whether they'll be safe or not. So wherever she is, in, in, at home, there were so many things. That, that sister told me, why Hunter O.C. was so busy in the church? Because I saw most of the documentation, church, Shamaib and church. In her, in her car, Shamaib and church, the certificates. So she wanted to make sure that when you call her, that there's someone who is in need of the certificates. It's in the car. She just drive and bring it in the church. So we lost a very dedicated person in our department and in the church at large. But we are so proud of her because the church is now where it is because of her contributions. She, made, she played a very uh, important role in the church. So to the family, I just wanted to say, but together, the God will see us through. Amen. And to Mbumian Junior, uh, you are aware or a, your mother, how can, what kind of a person was your mother? I still remember one of the things, the responsibility of our department is to make announcement every Sunday in the church. But she said to me, that machine, you can give me anything concerning the, uh, administration, but now I'm in front of people to announce something. I don't want to be there. No problem, you will be where you are suitable, you feel comfortable. And one day I've asked uh, Mbumi, it was during the youth month in June. I said, no, I want to speak to Mbumi to come and make an announcement. She said, hey, but I don't know whether she will be able to do it. I spoke to Mbumi. Mbumi came. She did it very well. Very, even now, normally during June, we know that Mbumi is one of the people who will be doing an announcement in the church. And she's so comfortable with that. She said, no, I was not aware how Mbumi can do such kind of a thing. So we are so proud of you, Mpumi and Junior. Continue to do what uh, you used to do when your mother was still alive. And to the family and the uh, colleagues at large, we say we thank you so much for coming and we thank you for borrowing your child to come and fellowship with us in the name of Jesus. And here with us, we've got a certificate that we want to, to honor Ospushia Kayona because normally in the church, there is a way by... All of the departments, we've got the ushering department, we've got protocol department, we've got admin, we've got so many departments. So in 2022, our department got the certificate, certificate of excellence. So, <laughs> so let me just read it before I can hand it over to one of the family members. It says, certificate of excellence, this certificate is awarded to team admin, first prize, for excellent, consistent service to the work of the Lord, we appreciate your hard work. Keep it up. The Lord bless you and your family. This has been signed by the senior pastor of the church and the church leaders. And it's dated the 3rd of September 2022. That is when we received this.
So, but as a team, we we feel it uh, suitable for us to give it to was pushed here in honor of her contributions. Any one of the family can come and receive it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Right now, Sizotela Baba Sekaya, Ubabum Lotto, Ezenga Pambili, Azokulmanati, Amen. so to if you are not here. No, it's fine. I'm going to do it for you. Uh, I'm Pule Moloto, the husband of Poshi Amolok. Uh, I just wanted to start the topic. That's why I called his name Van Lohenberg. Last night, actually this morning, around 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, I was speaking to Junior at 
if you think we're going through stuff, there's a lot of people who are going through a lot. At least when you've got me, you've got the church, you still have both two grannies. I know people who are going through a lot and he's only alone. So I'm still saying, Junior, you are, I showed you the person I was talking about again. Yeah. Uh, I was instructed by Mpumi that I must take three minutes. I think it's going to take the whole day if I speak about it. But I will touch there. And uh, we started dating in uh, 1993 at Langanani High School where we met. Yeah, and went on. I went to Cape Town. There was a little bit of breakup. Came back, started again, got married. And, yo, this woman, I think that the Matlangu and Mamatlangu, when they gave birth to her, it was for me. Because if it wasn't for her, maybe I wouldn't be standing here or I wouldn't have junior. I was a very naughty boy. Naughty, 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 naughty. She changed me. She made sure that she's instilling discipline into my head. I remember at some point, I'm just going to be honest and transparent. Come Merogo, they put me on the bench. Simple. I was suspended for something like nine months. Junior was three months. But I think it was God's way because I started uh, looking after Junior from three months. For nine months, I was staying with him. And Went back to work, she made sure that uh, from that on till now, Kimoti laying straight. So, Arwana, this Cape Town of yours, she followed me to Cape Town. Are, I'm going to give you a track. At the age of three, Junior, I drove with him from here to Cape Town, only the two of us. We were waiting for Mpumi or after the exams, and then yeah, now she was going to follow me with Mpum. She knew that uh, I was capable of taking care of Junior. So I think, uh, okay, thank you.
Aleluya. Aleluya. Tan gutugunta dem lodo. A wet baba. You are not alone. Unkunkulu to set dues and abandons a pugileo. Have courage, my brother. God is near you. He sees your pain. And he'll be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. As Katin Samanjing Zuangela, Unom Pumelelo, No Junior, Untatile Pulem Lotto, Ingan is Agassis Poshia. Amen. chapter in the Bible, Romans 8, verse 20, Romans 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We never imagined that we would be this, we would be standing in front of my mother in this kind of fashion at any time this moment. God our mother was more than just a mother to us. She was, she was our dearest friend, comforter, pillar of strength, and source of inspiration. We are extremely fortunate to have her like our mother, to have a mother like her. We thank God for her. Without her, our lives would not be as they are today. She taught us to prioritize God in all aspects of our lives. And she would say, I quote, Mbumi, Junior, Aguko Klulum, in Aguko Ogudula Umtandazo, and quote a verse, Philippians 4, verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. A woman of her caliber is hard to find, her excellency and hard effort. She always puts her best foot forward in everything that she does. She would rather not look good so that we could look good and have the best of everything. We never lacked anything, always seeking only the best for us. Her wisdom rested in her ability to look beyond the surface, to delve deep into the heart of one's existence, and to establish a meaningful and lasting relationship. It was wisdom that inspired us to seek out the beauty in others and create relationship based on love, respect, and mutual understanding. She always demonstrated a resilient spirit that refused to give up in the, face, in the face of adversity. Even in the hospital, we saw you fight and be courageous, strong, despite the pain you were feeling. In us, in us praying for your healing, we had no idea that this was the healing that you needed, that we prayed for. Even if it is difficult to accept, we will continue to trust in God. You ran a good race, Mama. We shall always treasure the times we spent with you, how gorgeous you were, your stunning smile. Thank you for being our guiding star, haven of love and eternal home. You were, are, and will always be our loving mother, a beautiful woman whose spirit will continue to dance in the corners of our hearts, bringing light, love, and joy. Hambagate, Mama. See you in the morning.
Amen. Siabonga Vatandigayo says Kichimisa is Kati right now. Siso Trela Ubuti Unkululego Mashangu Unfua Bogasis Pusha to come as Okuluma Pambin. Sorry for this long I you should give us Pumigas. My second Zima Ming it, Nita Mengum Puming it, eh, Bangi Peter Skenzi Mala, Kubin Kul make columns. All right. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. The verse is from Psalm 24, verse 4. With that said, I would like to greet you all. My name is Ngulego, the little brother of Sister Poshia Mulot. I am experiencing a wide, a wide range of feelings today as we come together to celebrate the life of my beloved sister, including sadness, grief, and deep sense of loss. Nevertheless, despite the suffering, there is also a great deal of thankfulness for a time we had together and a lasting impact she had on each of our lives. My sister was more than just a sister. She was my confidant, my mischievous companion, and my dependable support system. She was there for me from the beginning of my childhood to the challenges of adulthood, providing guidance, joy, and unwavering love. Her absence left an unfillable void while her presence served a beacon of hope throughout the darkest hours. But let's not limit our thoughts on her life to just being saddened by her loss today. Rather, let us honor the exquisite spirit of, of she embodied and, and in innumerable ways she enhanced. In our existence, her love knew no limits. Her generosity touched the hearts of everyone who met her. Her laughter, her laughter reverberated through the corridors of our house. Even though she is no longer with us, her spirit endures. In the love we still have our one another and memories we cherished. May we find comfort in knowing that she is in rest, smiling gently over us while we navigate the days ahead. As I say goodbye, my dearest sister, I take with me the priceless gift of your love. Influence you had on my life through we all continue to be inspired by your legacy of kindness, grace, and compassion. You will be much missed May your soul rest, knowing that you will always have a particular place in our hearts to look across, cross paths again. I love you, my sister. Thank you.
Can we all sing? If you can, you can stand on your feet and sing the song with us. so much Mr. Mashangu. At this time I'll call upon Dimakato Muloto and Lindogushe Kebeza to help us with reading of the reads. What I'll do, I'll ask the same song, then I was Dimakato and Lindogushe. I'll ask you to just take off the cards of the, the flowers and you'll just read the cards. You don't have to hold the whole flower. Amen. They can come to the front as we continue the very same song. the eldest granddaughter I would like to say to my family at large church, colleagues and friends I'll be reading from Jeremiah 29 verse 11 it says for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord the plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a better future. These are encouraging words that we are currently going through a circumstance, but God has promised us hope and a better future. I'll start by reading. by reading a card to my mom in heaven thank you for loving us and guiding us even though you are no longer here with us I can fully feel your love guiding me you are always in our hearts and we will remember you and miss you dearly love Nombumelelo Molot the world changes from year to year, our lives from day to day, but the love and the memory of you shall never pass from Muloto's family. I have gained an angel, but not just any angel, my very own personal angel watching over me, and she's my mom. Love, Junior Mulot. Sadly missed, never a thought away, loved and remembered every day. 
Love Aurora from Kaohelo and family. You'll forever be in our hearts, dear Poshia. You may be gone, but not forgotten. Rest well, my posh. Love, me, uh, medical payments. We have lost a sister, a daughter, an aunt. You will be truly missed, but we stand strong in the Lord because we trust in him. May you rest in peace. You will always be in our hearts. Your memory shall live with us from Matlangu's family. Your life was a blessing. Your memory a treasure. You are loved beyond words and you'll be missed beyond measures from Kebeza's family. Blessed are those who die in the Lord. Revelations 14 verse 13. You will always remain in our hearts, our dear sister, from Shama Urban Church. Our heartfelt, our heartfelt condolences to the Moloto and Masangu family in support of Mpumi and Junia. All our love, youth ignite. Psalm 73 verse 26. Rest in peace, Ausposhia, from the A team. To cease Poshia, death stole you from us, but your memories remain with us. We will miss all the laughters. Good night, sis Poshia. See you in the morning, admin team. SA, SA Navy Spouses Forum wishes to extend its heartfelt condolences to the petty officer Pule Muloto and his entire family for the untimely passing of Miss Daisy Fiki Leposhia Muloto. The loss of your wife is great, but your heart is strong. And there are many who stand with you to share this burden. May you and your family find peace and strength in God. May her precious soul rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Chairperson of S SCA Navy Spouses Forum, Ms. B. Lobes. Thank you. Thank you, Aus Dimagato and Aus Lindo Gutle. At this time, I'll ask Umole Momunyai to prepare yourself to read the obituary for us. This time, I'd like everyone in the house to stand up in honor of Mamposha as they'll be reading the obituary. All of us will be on our feet. Family, if you don't feel like standing up, you can sit down. But everyone in the house, I'd like you to just honor this moment as Omole Momunyai is coming to read for us. Halimputa. Teboyaka ki kariki she so gila We'll hum this song very softly. Poshia Moloto was born on the 4th of April 1978 at Galafong Hospital. She started her primary school at and proceeded to Tlanganani High School where she matriculated in the year 1994. She started at Pretoria Technicon. She then furthered her studies at Mancosa, obtained a degree in Bachelor of Commerce in Financial Management. Her work experience includes working at Queen's Park Retail Store, the Department of Justice, and the Department of Home Affairs. She was a senior state accountant at the Department of Defense when she passed on. She was married to Bule Moloto. They were blessed with two children, Nompumelelo and Junior Moloto. She leaves behind both parents, two brothers, 
husband, and two children. She will be dearly missed by family, friends, and relatives. Le Riki Boni Riki Boni Riki Boni Boni Tambo Thank you so much. You may take your seats. Hallelujah. We're almost at the end of our program, which is part two. We're going to move to part three of the cemetery. But before that, I'll ask a worship song from the choir and we'll ask our pastor Tsepi Somukwena to give us a word. Amen. Hallelujah. If you are st still outside and there's chest inside, I'll encourage you to come inside as we'll be hearing the word from God. The choir you can give us a song and just like that, Pastor Mugwena will be ushered in front. Amen.
to be praised Lord even at this very moment you are worthy to be praised even under this dark cloud your name be lifted up even as we mourn your name be lifted up for you are worthy and you are highly exalted far above the heavens you are exalted Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for your presence in this place. In the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ukonala. You are with us in this place. You are with the family. You are with the children. You are with the husband. You are with the friends. You are in this place. You are in this place. We can feel your presence. And we know that you are here. The great comforter is here. In the precious name of Jesus. And we all say amen. Somebody give the Lord a clap offering in this place. Come on, somebody make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Just give the Lord a shout as we celebrate the life of our sister. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me take this time to acknowledge the presence of the Lord that is in our midst. Amen. Let me also take this time and Greet the family. Bamuloto and the Mashlangu family. Thank you so much once more as a church. Thank you for allowing us to partner with you as we are laying our sister. Thank you for allowing us to come to your house during the week. We're with you from Monday till today. And we don't take that for granted. Let me acknowledge the pastors that are here. Pastor Tandega, Pastor Matsobane, Pastor Tuputela, and their lovely wives, and Pastor Pesi. Amen. Um, can we clap hands for them? Amen. <clears throat> Greetings also to the elders of the church. Greetings to the neighbors, the friends that are here. Greetings to the colleagues from the Department of Home Affairs, the Department of Justice, Department of Defense. You are all acknowledged according to your ranks. Amen. I want to minister shortly on a subject that I have titled Build on the Rock. And we all say, build on the rock. Allow me to just build my case. Um, please just play something for me, amen. Can we open our Bibles in the book of Ecclesiastes? Chapter number 7, verse number 2. Our senior pastor, Bishop Hugh Sibuyi, ministered during the week and he mentioned something very important he said we do not grieve like them who do not have hope we have hope amen we have hope that there is life after death that our sister is in her resting place amen in ecclesiastes chapter 7 this book falls under what we call the wisdom literature. If you were to ask 
who in the Bible does the Bible refer to as the wisest man? Solomon is the man in the Bible that the Bible refers to as the wisest man who has ever lived. Solomon therefore gives us this book as a wisdom literature. I will be going through some of the things that Solomon says and then we are going to rush and go into the book of Matthew and lastly the book of Isaiah and we will be closing. Amen. Amen. Chapter 7 verse number 2 and then we are going to go back to chapter 1 just to see a few things. Chapter 7 verse number 2. Solomon says it is better to go to a house of those who are mourning than to go to a house where there is a party. For death is the destiny of everyone. The living should take this to heart. The version on the screen says, it is better to go to the house of the morning than to go to a house where they are feasting. For that is the end of all men. And the living will take it to heart. Other versions, they say it is better to go to a house where there are people who are mourning and are weeping than to go to a house where there is a party. For when you are in a house where people are mourning, there you get to think about what death means to you. In other words, what Solomon is saying to us is that every time whenever we gather in a house where we are mourning, each and every one of us, we get to reflect on the life that we are living and what we are deciding to display as we live. Death reminds all of us that we are passing by in this earth. And as we are passing by in this earth, we ought to reflect on the type of life that we live and the legacy that we live on earth. At this point in moment, we will not speak much of our sister. She's already finished her race. We will now speak more about us who are sitting right now in this house. Who are yet to use this moment to reflect on the standard of our lives. Allow me to take you back just to chapter 1. I'll be just reading a few things and I will be not dwelling much on it. Let me just give you a background of this man, Solomon. Solomon had accumulated wealth. All the wealth that you can ever think of. Solomon accumulated wealth to a point where Solomon could afford all the things that he wanted to afford. Solomon's wealth amounted to a point where every day Solomon hired musicians to sing for him in the house. In the morning when Solomon woke up, there were people who were singing for him. In the afternoon when he's having his lunch, there were people who were singing for him. In the evening when he has his dinner, there are people around his table who are singing for him. Solomon had slaves. Solomon had servants. Solomon had wives, more than 500 wives, because he could afford them. Not only did he have more than 500 wives, Solomon had concubines. And from the wives and the concubines, Solomon even wrote more than 1,000 songs, maybe each song for one wife. That is how wise and wealthy Solomon was. I want us then to draw wisdom from a man who then had it all in the earth. Who, when he had it all in the earth, he opens his book in chapter 1. And when he opens his book in verse number 2, he says, Vanity upon vanity, says the teacher and is referring to himself. All is vanity. Other versions, they say, meaningless, meaningless. All things are meaningless. 
Other versions, they say useless. All things are useless. The version that are life, it says all things have no purpose. There is no purpose at all. In verse number three, he says, what do people gain from all their labor and the toil under the sun? He begins to cry. He says, generations come and generations go, but the earth remains. In chapter number two, Solomon begins to speak about the pleasures of life. And he says in verse number one, I said to myself, I will test all the pleasures of life and see if I will be fulfilled. But he says all of it proved to be meaningless. Laughter, I said, is madness. And what does pleasure accomplish? I tried cheering myself with wine and embracing folly. My mind still guided me with wisdom. I wanted to see what was good for people to do under the heaven during the few days of their life. He says, I even took projects under myself to build houses I could not even live in because I was trying to find pleasure in life. But alas, I have made a conclusion. All is meaningless, says the wise man, Solomon. In chapter number three, he says, I have realized that there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. This is Solomon speaking. In chapter number four, Solomon speaks about oppression and the toil and being friendly. But Solomon when he gets to chapter number seven, in which we opened with, that is when he says, it is better that we be in a house where people are mourning. Because after the, all the things that I have said, in the house where people are mourning, we will get to reflect on the value of life. Because if we never have a moment where we reflect on the value of life, Solomon is saying, we will measure on the minor and minor on the major. We will undervalue the things that are important in life and we will bring into value the things that are not important in life. Solomon, the wise man, is speaking. In chapter number 12, Solomon wraps up his book. In verse number 13, Solomon says, let us hear the conclusion of the matter. I have lived. I have accomplished all. I have studied. I had the money. I had the women. Exposed to all types of entertainment you can all think of. But Solomon says here is the conclusion of the all matter. Fear the Lord. For this is the whole duty of men. Solomon says, after I have assessed life, I realize there is only one duty for men. It is not the accumulation of cars. It is not the accumulation of wealth. All of these things that we are chasing, Solomon says, you are not the first one to chase them. Generations came before you. And they were chasing the same car, chasing the same degree, chasing the same women, and they passed. But at the end of the day, the earth remains. And generations come, and generations pass. And Solomon says, let us evaluate life. I want to invite you on a journey where in these few minutes we evaluate life and you evaluate your life. That what are the things that you hold so dear in your life and the things that you hold so dear in your life? Could it be that you are measuring on the minor and minoring on the major? There's a saying that 
But he is into the movies, the London. That is to say that if you had accumulated certain things, usually once you leave, they also start to rot also. Cars can disappear. Houses can also follow you. That is to say that even the things that we think we are leaving behind that will sustain our families, they might actually follow us as we live. What is it then that we can leave to our families that will never depart? The Bible, for example, says, train your child in the ways of the Lord. So that when he grows up, he will never forget the ways of the Lord. Let's open the book of Matthew chapter 7. Building on the rock. Matthew chapter 7. Verse 24 to 27. I read. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. The last book, the book of Isaiah, chapter 51. Isaiah chapter 51. Listen to me, that's verse number one. You who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord, look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry from which you were hewn. I want to say to you, Bazanet, this morning that the Bible in all the groups of people that it presents in the world, the Bible also speaks about us in the world that we are not only mere human beings living in the earth, but we are builders in the earth. The Bible therefore says that there are two types of builders. Gunaban to these two groups, they are both builders. But the Bible says uh, one man builds on the rock the other man builds on sand. As I'm speaking like this, I hope that this helps you to reflect that in your life, are you building on sand or you are building on the rock? There is one common thing between these two groups of people and that it is both the ones that are building on sand and the ones that are building on the rock. Little people in king as on as balandela bong. The troubles of this earth follow both them that build on the rock and them that build on sand. Little Bible, the one who builds on, on, on the rock after he has built on the rock, storms come, rain come, streams of life come because in life we will all have oppositions. But the Bible says as all of these things come, little Bible, his house does not fall because it is Build on the rock. God does not promise us that when we follow him, we will not experience the hardships of life. But he is promising us that if you are to build on the rock, storms will come, trouble will come, streams will come. But because your house is built on the rock, your house will be able to stand. Little people, Nalona, who builds on sand, little people, the oppositions of life will come, and his house will shake and fall. The real issue here, it is not what was in the house, but where was the house built on? 
The real issue here is not what you have while you are still alive. You can brag about your degree, your diploma, you, but it is not about the car you drive. But where are you built, oh my God? You see, the reason why our society, it is as it is today, it is not because we are struggling to buy cars or to send our kids to the best universities. It is because of the foundation that we are building on. We ought to use this privilege, this moment, no matter how painful it is, to reflect on where we are building. What are we building as a nation? And where are we building as a nation? When you are raising up your kids, it is not the cars that you leave behind that sustains them. It is the foundation that you have laid. <sighs> that will sustain your children. Even when mama is gone. When I listen to Mpumi speaking. I realize the foundation has been laid here. And it is a strong foundation. That we, oh my God. This foundation will last. This foundation will stay for years. Why? Because the mother did the deep. She did not build on sand. She did the deep and found the rock. You see, when Pumi was speaking, she does not say that mama left this thing in the house. She says, my mother always said, what are you saying to your children? Around the dinner table, what are your conversations? <laughs> because all of these things, Solomon says, vanity of vanities. Meaningless. Meaningless. Generations come and generations go. There's a powerful statement and a painful statement that Solomon says, Ari, it is possible that you can accumulate wealth for your children, but if they are foolish, if they are foolish, your daughters can sell off your wealth to the in-laws. Ah. If they are foolish, your boys can sell off your wealth. They had built legacy. And the question is, did you leave cars for them or you left a rock for them? There is a rock, O Kabahane. There is a rock called Jesus. Let the Bible la baba la gala gu ya ba ya sinda. Let the Bible is in ngin kinga so munto lungileyo. Go to our Jehovah umkhula kuzo zonke. Let the Bible the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Oh the righteous they run to it and they are safe. Uthu David some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. There is a rock. A cabane. There is a rock. To the Muloto family. To the Matangu family. There's a rock. Ah, yeah. Kuna tuala. Kuya ya kwamle ni tuala. Kuya salega kule ni tuala. Kuya pinwa kule ni tuala. Baya kula bantuana. Oh my God. Umame ngeko. Kutu abakule. When Isaiah speaks. In chapter 51. Isaiah says. All of you who seek salvation. Are look to the rock. Oh yeah. The rock in which you were cut from. So listen to me, my God. You were cut from a certain rock. Ah, yeah, yeah. You are not just here on earth. Oh, you were cut from a rock. And that rock is Jesus. There's a rock. 
And that rock is Jesus. Use this moment to reflect. Use this moment to reflect. Where are you built upon? What are your foundations? Listen to me. I am not presenting a type of a church to you. I'm presenting Jesus to you. I am saying build on the rock. Because the storms of life will come. If there is a mobile house, it is a tent. It moves from one house to another house every weekend. It moves from one block in Soshanguva to another block. It moves from city to city. But what makes a difference in all of these families, my figure in we are Where are you built? Are we not? Are we not measuring on minor things? When you hear someone that I am working so hard so that when, my, when I am gone, my children, they will not use the text. Do you think that is enough? When you've never had a conversation about them around the dinner table about Jesus who is the solid rock Ebanwele, asikolo ngobas na zinking. We are not following Jesus because there are no problems in Him. I know you sing that song that says "Hi, oh matata, matata de anymore." But what matters is we are built on the rock. Pastors lose, members lose cars, pastors are retrenched. But what matters? The foundation. Storms came, but I remained standing. Funerals came, I remained standing. Retrenchments come, I remained standing. What is your secret? Built on the rock. I want to present Jesus to you as we all stand up. I had someone during the week was saying why do we present altar calls in funeral why do we say if you want to receive the Lord just come and receive the Lord he was asking and I said to him maybe it is because in a funeral in a house of mourning that's where everyone just to really reflect on the value of life. And this morning I want to offer you a chance that you are saying I have heard of the life that our sister lived. And I want to follow on that path. I want to leave something meaningless to my house. I want this Jesus that she was following. I want this rock. And I'm going to offer you a chance. That if you lift up your hand wherever you are. If you're saying, I want to receive this rock. Troubles will come, but I want to be found having built on Jesus. May this same thing not find me building on sand. I'm offering you this opportunity. It is not about the people that are close to you. It is about your life. It is about your family. It is about your children. And I want to say to you, if you are here and you are saying, Murut, I have heard the word of the Lord. And please just pray with me. Just lift up your hand wherever you are. And I'm going to pray with you. Just lift up your hand if you are here. And we are definitely going to lead you to Jesus. The rock that is higher than any other rock. Ladies and gentlemen, if we are all born again here, let's lay hands for ourselves. Praise be to the name of the Lord. In this moment, not to make a decision is a decision. And that is why we never force anyone. We don't try new songs. Because not to make a decision is also a decision. I want us right now as a congregation to pray for the family. 
And I'm going to request that someone alert the team outside to get ready as we pray for the family. Let us all bow our heads and we pray for the family. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, for the family. We also pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for the Muloto family. Father, thank you for your peace. Thank you that, Lord, they are built on the firm foundation. Thank you that they are built on the rock. Thank you that, Lord, this will not sweep them away. We rebuke, oh God, all kinds of diseases. We rebuke depression, anxiety in the name of Jesus. And Father, we declare that even after this storm, the family will stand. And Father, we thank you for the life of our sister in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can I just have the worship team coming back on the stage? And I'm going to request that the team can get in. Amen. I'm also going to request that we try and ensure that there is enough space here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we normally request, Bazalwan, we request that we do not drive in front of the cars that are accompanying our sister. We are all accompanying her. Amen. And we are going to Soshanguve Crossing Cemetery. Amen. So let us not be in a rush. Let us follow the cars and move in an orderly manner. Amen. I'm going to request my pastors to prepare. And we're going to be in front as we lead out our sister. In Jesus' mighty name. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we talk, there's two buses outside. For, for those who don't have transport, there's two buses outside, and then will we, we'll accompany us to the cemetery. When we come back, we